Great. <laughs> Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Township Committee meeting of September 12th, 2017. Ms. Borak, please call the roll. Committee Member Shett? Absent. Committee Man Delcor? Here. Committee Man Thompson? Here. Deputy Mayor McCauley? Here. Mayor Sirachi? Here. Administrator Ferreira? Here. Attorney Willard? Here. Attorney Bernstein? Here. Please join me in a salute to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please be advised that in accordance with Section 5 of the, public, of the Open Public Meeting, Meetings Act, Chapter 231 of the Public Laws of 1975. That notice of this meeting was made by the posting on the bulletin board at the Hillsborough Township Municipal Complex and notifying the officially designated papers or newspapers that this meeting would take place at the Hillsborough Township Municipal Complex at 7.30 p.m. on September 12, 2017. Uh, before we begin, um, got a little bit of sad news to share. Uh, this past uh, Sunday, um, Mildred Murphy, who was a uh, 2008 Grand Marshal and World War II veteran, uh, passed away. Um, just a little bit about uh, Millie, as she was known. Uh, she served as an Army a hospital nurse during World War II, treated thousands of war wounded servicemen at the, at the Army Hospital on Staten Island. Her story was one of several that had been documented as part of Brookdale College's Center for World War, World War II Studies and Conflict Resolution Program, as well as in Nicole Rossi's Girl Scout Goldwater Project. Goldwater Pro Project. Uh, Millie was a volunteer member of the Hillsboro CERT team, as well as a past volunteer member of the police department, and most recently in the social services department. Millie will be greatly missed by everyone here in the township. Uh, I ask everyone to join me in a moment of silence. Thank you. Uh, before we continue, uh, we do have a uh, like to acknowledge Freeholder Director Peter Palmer, who will be uh, retiring at the end of uh, at this year, and just wanted to invite him up uh, to say for a few comments. Okay, so I can wander around and talk. <laughs> Uh, thank you very much, Mayor. Uh, this is my last year freeholder. I decided I would make it a practice to visit each of the 21 counties' governing bodies. Uh, glad to be here tonight, especially in Hillsborough, which has always been a, very important to me. This is my 15th stop. I've got six more to go. Uh, at any rate, I've certainly enjoyed, really enjoyed working with all of you and your predecessors. Uh, for the last 20 years. Uh, uh, one of the pre freeholders' top priorities is working with each one of our 21 municipal governments. Uh, we've certainly had a lot of productive uh, interactions and working together with, uh, with Hillsboro. Uh, we're certainly uh, both very happy to see the Mountain View Park completed. And there seems to be good news that the uh, bypass is actually going to happen, uh, and uh, not uh, certainly. W w uh, it's going to get apparently it's going to get started quite soon, and it's going to be. Uh, I know you're going to really appreciate it, and uh, it'll be great to have the Peter J. Biondi bypass uh, completed. Uh, uh, very much look forward to that. I. I enjoyed, as an old timer, if you will, uh, when you, we did the flag salute, that you actually had a 48 star flag uh, in that uh, presentation. Uh, it's nice to see them, as a matter of fact, see that. Matter of fact, when they see these Iwo Jima uh, replays, it would be nice if they had a 48 star flag, which is what was uh, there rather than using 50 star flags. But at any rate, that's <laughs> not all that relevant. But at any rate, uh, I've, I've so much enjoyed working particularly with 
Hillsborough Township and uh, keep up the good work. Thank you. Thank you. So, Peter, you, you will definitely be missed on the field where you've been a great friend of Hillsborough. And, and I've been up here for a little bit of time, too, and we've worked quite well together over these years. So, appreciate all your years of service to Somerset County. Thank you very much, Carl. Yes. Certainly, I spent a lot more time in Hillsborough, I think, than I have in any other town except the one I live in. So. <laughs> Mr. Director, I uh, just want to say thank you as well for, for your incredible service to the, to the uh, county. Um, I think as the mayor said, uh, there's, there hasn't been a better freeholder friend to, to Hillsborough than, uh, than Peter Palmer. We appreciate all that you've done. I know you noted the uh, bypass, which has been one of your uh, driving projects for, for a number of years. I know you've been, you've been so uh, intimately involved in the transportation process throughout the state. And um, we appreciate all that you've done for that. Uh, always willing to uh, visit us for our community events and anything going on in town. So um, thank you for your service and thank you for your support at Hillsborough. It's greatly appreciated. So up next, we have approval of minutes. Um, I have a motion to approve the August 8th, 2017 regular session <coughs> minutes. So move, Mayor. Second. Comments from the dais? From the floor? Seeing on roll call, please. Commandment Delcor? Yes. Commandment Thompson? Yes. Deputy Mayor McCauley? Yes. Mayor Sirachi? Yes. Uh, moving on to reports from committee liaisons. First up, Committee Mendelcourt. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I just, uh, I'm sure you'll touch on it, but um, we did attend, uh, the mayor and I, last Friday. We had a grand opening here in town. Um, it's been open for a bit, but we had an official grand opening of the Arthur Murray Dance Studio on, on Route 206 on Friday evening. Uh, did an incredible job with the uh, space that's in the uh, space where the uh, tractor supply company is and, and Planet Fitness uh, adjacent to that. Um, and they had a number of, uh, of dancers there. Uh, they did a number of performances. Um, the mayor and I uh, did not dance, um, but, uh, but uh, it, was, uh, it was still a, a worthwhile event, so I wanted to just thank them for, for inviting us and wish them the best of luck uh, in the future. Um, and if anyone has any interest in uh, ballroom dance lessons, we've got a place in town you can, you can go to now. Um, and uh, of course, yesterday, and I know uh, everyone will touch on it, but thanks for Woods Road for their, uh, their ongoing uh, commemoration of the 9 11 uh, events. We were all there last night uh, for, that, uh, for that ceremony, and uh, uh, they do an incredible job of, of keeping the spirit um, that, uh, uh, of remembrance uh, alive in, at that event. So, thank you for them. Um, from the uh, police department, I know the chief's here with us. Um, just a reminder, uh, obviously school has restarted, so uh, we'd just like to remind residents to please be mindful of students uh, and drive carefully, both for um, the uh, kids that are waiting for the bus or, or, or walking to and from school, um, as well as some of the younger drivers that are going to school. So. Um, as we all know, anyone that commutes uh, once September starts, traffic does pick up. Um, the buses obviously slow traffic down a bit, so um, slow down, be patient. Uh, you'll get where you're going, uh, maybe a little slower, but uh, we certainly want to make sure that our, our school kids are safe here in town. And uh, just a reminder to be cautioned to, uh, to stop for school buses and, uh, and obviously uh, be on the alert for increased pedestrian traffic. Um, it's also recommended that motorists plan for a longer commute, um, so just be, be mindful of that, please. From our Office of Emergency Management, uh, in collaboration with the Health Department and Hillsborough uh, Business Advocates Office, we'll be conducting a point of distribution uh, 
uh, event on September the 27th at Mountain View Park, which is on Mountain View Road between 11 and 1 p.m. on that 27th. A point of distribution drill is conducted to test the township's capabilities to distribute supplies and medi medications to residents and visitors to Hillsborough in the event of a natural disaster uh, or uh, man-made or, uh, or natural pandemic. Uh, Hillsborough businesses were invited to donate discount coupons and other promotional giveaways to be included in supply bags, uh, but there will not be uh, any medication distributed during the drill, uh, but it will prepare us in the event we need to distribute medication down the road. Township residents are encouraged to assist the drill by driving through the POD and uh, receiving their supply bag. The more people that participate, uh, the better prepared the township will be in the event of an actual emergency. And as noted, you can access the POD drill via Mountain View Road between 11 uh, a.m. and 1 p.m. on the 27th. Upon entering the complex, visitors will be directed on how to proceed to participate in the drill and residents will simply need to drive through the drill and only takes a couple of minutes to participate. So anyone that would like to, uh, please join us that day. There's additional information at our OEM office, 908-369-4313. Uh, I think we've all seen over the last several weeks with the uh, incredible disasters that our country has experienced uh, from Harvey and Irma uh, that we can never be too prepared uh, for the event of a disaster. Uh, obviously, we've experienced it with Sandy several years ago. So uh, it's just a good opportunity for us to make sure that uh, we have the capability and uh, a, uh, a sound process to make sure we can distribute those materials as needed uh, in the event of a, of a disaster. So uh, good training exercise. And from the clerk's office, um, October 17th is the last day to register to vote in the general election. Uh, so anyone that uh, would still like to vote uh, but has not yet registered. Uh, you have about a month left to, to do so. Um, October 31st is the last day to request a mail by uh, by vote application. Is that right? October 31st, or is that? I'm sorry. Is that date right? October 31st for for mailing. That's when you can request an application, or you can go um, okay. to the county to get one. Okay. To get Just want to make sure that date was accurate. Application for mail-in ballot. Yes. Okay. And, uh, of course, uh, Election Day is Tuesday, November the 7th. So um, just want to make sure everyone has the opportunity to vote, uh, conduct their civic duty. So if you need to register, please do so by the 17th. That's all for me, Mayor. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Commitment. Commitment Thompson. Thank you, Mayor. Just a couple of events that I attended. First, I want to thank the Rotary for doing their special needs day uh, during the Rotary Fair. It's an event that... Uh, they hold every year where they make sure they turn off all the sirens and sounds that normally uh, go along with the fair to uh, make sure that they can accommodate uh, children with special needs, uh, including children who have autism. Uh, it's truly a moving event. Thousands of dollars of food is donated by vendors and just an amazing event put on by the Rotary Club who donate all their time to make it a completely free event. Uh, for uh, residents who have family members with disabilities. So I just want to personally thank uh, Anthony Francini, uh, President of the Rotary, and all the members who made that event possible this year. It was uh, truly just a great event, and uh, I was very honored to attend that. Uh, also, I want to thank the Junior Raiders for holding their Touch a Truck event uh, last Saturday. Uh, our DPW attended. I want to thank them for going there, but also all of our firehouses participated as well. Uh, it was loud. Uh, since they had all the horns going, so if you were a resident living over, over there by Triangle, I apologize, but the kids loved it, uh, especially when the state police were uh, nice enough to land the helicopter on the field, too. So very cool event for all the children in town, and again, that was a free event. Junior Raiders put that on, so thank you to Junior Raiders for, for doing that. From the Recreation Department, our annual Children's Township Halloween Party will be held on Thursday, October 26th from 4.30 to 6.30. Pre-registration uh, pre is required. It's $5 per child. And for that, you get to take a hayride, pick a pumpkin, uh, visit the uh, now famous haunted house here at the municipal building, and uh, receive a goodie bag. So visit our website uh, for that, and you can register through the, um, the portal on there. Also, the annual Halloween party, uh, that's H-O-W-L, it will be held on Saturday, October 28th at Ann Vans Middleworth Park. Registration is 8.30. Uh, registration is required, uh, and that starts at 8.30 a.m., and the parade is at 9 a.m. Uh, that is our 
annual uh, party for our four-legged friend dogs in town. So please attend that. It's a great event, a lot of fun. Again, pre-registration is required for both, both, and you can visit our website. From the DPW, just a reminder that uh, on our telephone poles around town, posters do not belong on them. If you are planning to use a sign to publicize any activity, please post it on a stake, not on a utility pole. Uh, usually you will need a permit for that, so make sure you contact our um, township offices to make sure that you are not violating any of our laws. And last but not least, credit card. The Hillsborough Township Credit Card Advisory Committee will be accepting grant applications beginning today uh, for the second round of grants for 2017. Applicants uh, will be, applications will be available on the township website or can be picked up in the administrative office for any township-based nonprofit senior or youth organizations to apply for grants of up to $2,000 funded through the Hillsborough Township Credit Card Rewards Program. Grant applications can be found on the township website um, and must be given back by October 6, 2017, back to our, uh, the administration office. To date, the Hillsborough Rewards Program has awarded nearly $70,000 in grants to community-based nonprofits, and the Hillsborough uh, Rewards Program, through the grant application process, is a great resource for all of our local community um, nonprofit so please take advantage of that and if you do not have a credit card you can easily sign up for one at www.affinityfcu.com slash Hillsborough thank you mayor okay. <clears throat> thank you commitment deputy mayor McCall. thank you mayor good evening everybody uh, just a few things for me tonight the Hillsborough Raiders also uh, put on the um, football and cheer community night about a week or so ago and uh, a few of us attended that event uh, Mr. Thompson, Committeeman Thompson's daughters and the uh, Hillsborough Raiders, and I think it's her senior year this year. Senior year. So yeah. good luck to her and all the cheerleaders. Always brings back some memories for me and my cheerleading skills back in the day. They've come a long way, so uh, it's always fun to go out there and see what they're doing these days. I um, wanted to th say thank you to Coach Cardi and Bruce Wayne for uh, welcoming us, along with Committeeman Delcor. And also a shout out to Jamie Moore, who always hands us T-shirts and hats to get there and stay in the stay in the up and no in the uh, upcoming year for football and cheerleading this year. So hopefully they have a great season. Um, from the finance department, property tax bills will be mailed during the last week of September. The tax bill will include the billing for the fourth quarter of 2017, which is due on November 1st, as well as the billing for the first two quarters of 2018. That time of the year is coming up for vaccinations for 12 and up, ages 12 and up. Hillsborough Township Health Department and Walgreens are partnering together to co-sponsor a community flu vaccination clinic. It will be at this building, municipal building, on Tuesday, October 3rd and Tuesday, October 10th from 3 to 6 p.m. The standard intramuscular vaccine for the 2017 to 18 flu season will be offered in high doses for those who are over the age of 65 if requested or a standard for others. The cost will be $25.99 cash or credit will be welcome. Uh, for the standard vaccine. Details are on the township website and you can also visit the Friday e-news for further information. From the Municipal Alliance this evening, Family Unity Night is coming back to Auten Road School. It is a free seven-week program for children uh, 10 to 14 years old and their parents or caregivers to attend this. It is a free program. It, gives, it, it runs from September 27th through November 15th and you can also visit the e-news for further clarification on what that entails and the dates for that as well. And that's it for me this evening, Mayor. Thank you. <clears throat> Great. Thank you, Deputy Mayor. Uh, I've got a few items this evening. Um, first, this actually just came out, I guess, this afternoon. Uh, you have signed up for our Swift Reach 911. Uh, I believe that's where it came out through that notification. We do have an emergency road closure. Um, East Mountain Road is closed effective immediately uh, between Amwell Road and Duval Road for, for emergency bridge repairs. Uh, please do follow the detours and it's anticipated to remain closed for two weeks. Okay, reminder, uh, a week from today, next Tuesday, September 19th, is our Senior Olympics. Uh, Please sign up at the social services uh, or in our social services department uh, by the end of this week. And I know uh, we will have some great photos from that. Uh, it's always a great event every year. And perhaps we should invite uh, <coughs> Freeholder Director Palmer to uh, mm -hmm. perhaps be our guest. Okay. I'll extend the invitation yep. tomorrow. Thank you. 
And lastly, Veterans Day. It's it's just about two uh, two months away, but just wanted to uh, offer this reminder that on Saturday, November 11th at 8:30 a.m., we will host a veteran ceremony at the Garden of Honor, just outside the building, followed by light refreshments across the hall in the multi-purpose room. So please save the date, uh, Saturday, November 11th. And <clears throat> as always, you can stay connected with all these events and more via our Friday e-newsletter. There are postcards in the back uh, to sign up if you're not uh, receiving uh, the Friday e-newsletter. We also have a Twitter account and also uh, TV29 and the Hillsborough YouTube channel showcase these meetings, our playing board meetings, and our semi-reality TV show known as Hillsborough The Good Life. And please be sure to check out the new high energy format. Uh, it's only 10 minutes. It's not, if you saw the first season, I think they were running about a half hour, but now we got about 10, yeah, 10 minute episodes. Um, and you'll never know, one of you may already be on it and you don't even realize it. So just look out for Kaz there. He's always uh, has his camera in hand. And as I mentioned earlier, uh, with this emergency road closure, if you haven't done so, please sign up for Swift Reach 911 for traffic and emergency notifications. I know it saves me uh, a couple of times a year during the morning or afternoon uh, rush hour commutes, you know, if, if there's any traffic issues in town. And that's all I have for this evening. So we will now move on to proclamations. And all I ask is that when you do receive uh, your recognition to please uh, return to your seat uh, to allow others to uh, receive uh, their proclamations but I do promise that we will take a pause at the end of that to allow you to, uh, to leave for the evening. Uh, we will not be offended if you uh, take us up on that, but we always like to have lots of company in our meetings, so you're always welcome to stay. So, uh, First up, it will be a proclamation uh, noting September as Ovar Ovarian Cancer Awareness Month. So Susan Timko and anyone else that's uh, here for that proclamation, please join me in the front. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Whereas, by proclaiming September 2017 as Ovar Ovarian Cancer Awareness Month, we call attention to a disease that affects women across our country, state, and or across our county, state, and country, with the American Cancer Society estimating that 15,000 American women are projected to lose their lives to ovarian cancer this year. And whereas, these women are mothers, daughters, sisters, grandmothers, community members, and cherished friends and the absence that they leave in our hearts will be deeply felt forever. And whereas women who are middle-aged and older, who have a family history of ovarian or breast cancer, who, or have had certain cancers in the past, are at increased re risk of developing ovarian cancer. And whereas the ovarian cancer knows no boundaries, the disease can strike anyone across lines of age, ethnicity, and race. And whereas because ovarian cancer often goes undetected until advanced stages, Increasing the awareness of risk factors is, criti is critical to fighting this disease, as it estimated that about 22,000 new cases of ovarian cancer will be diagnosed in the United States this year. And whereas the public awareness campaign strives to increase knowledge about this disease and recognizes the best defense against ovarian cancer is early detection. Therefore, it is essential that women know the risk factors associated with the disease, with the disease and that men are educated so that they can help their wives, mothers, grandmothers, aunts, sisters, and girlfriends. And whereas this month is dedicated to the prevention and awareness, it is also to honor those we have lost, show our support for women who bravely carry on the fight, and take action to lessen the tragic toll ovarian cancer takes on families across our country. Now therefore, be it proclaimed 
that we, the Mayor and the Township Committee of the Township of Hillsborough, do hereby recognize September 2017 as Ovarian Cancer Awareness Month and call upon citizens, government agencies, organizations, health care providers, and research inst institutions to raise awareness or to raise ovarian cancer awareness and continue helping women live longer, healthier lives and urge women to talk to, talk to their health care providers to learn more about this, about this disease. Signed by the Mayor and the members of the Township Committee. Thank you. I just, thank you. I just love, I have to always say thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for this. Every year saying yes to this. Um, I, as you know, I lost my mom to this disease and I've met many people throughout the years who've lost people and I just recently met a man who lost his wife 12 years ago and the signs and th symptoms are on the website. Um, we volunteer for Turn the Town's Tales, turnthetownstale.org. All the signs and symptoms are on there. I just want to emphasize this w w one symptom because this gentleman was just so charged, he feels it gets neglected and it's menstrual changes. He said he's known four women, including his wife, that had that and she, his wife waited and the others went. And um, I just want to say that on behalf of him and his, his wife that he lost. To, and, and definitely go to ovariancancer.org and turn to townstale.org. Thank you so much. Just want to thank you again you know, for doing your part you know, raising awareness. And actually, uh, I know we have lots of ribbons around you know, the, uh, the municipal complex, so if anyone has seen it out there, that's the reason why, is to raise awareness for ovarian cancer. Next, I'd like to invite down Owen Zabo and anyone from his family. Whereas Owen Zabo, a senior at Hillsborough High School and a member of Boy Scout Troop 156, has recently earned the status of Eagle Scout. And whereas the Hillsborough Township Committee of the Township of Hillsborough recognizes the many hours that Owen devoted to attaining the status of Eagle Scout, working with diligence and making sacrifices in order to achieve this highly coveted position. And whereas o Owen has served the Boy Scouts in an exemplary manner and is deserving of the honor bestowed upon him. And whereas Owen's Eagle Scout project consisted of installing three seating areas around the Hillsborough Municipal Complex and a wooden bench along the rain garden path at the Hillsborough Municipal Complex. And whereas Owen has completed the Order of the Arrow, the Scout Honor Society. And whereas Owen, Owen was the recipient of the Scout Scholar Athlete Award and served as Senior Patrol Leader. And whereas Owen is an active member of the Varsity Cross Country and Track Teams at Hillsborough High School. Whereas Owen, Owen serves as an example to youth of Hillsborough Township through his high level of leadership and community service, and we're very proud that he's a member of our community. Now, therefore, be it proclaimed that we, the mayor and the Hillsborough Township Committee,
do hereby recognize and extend our sincere congratulations to Owen for having achieved the status of Eagle Scout, an honor for both him and for those who guided him, with best wishes for a bright future. Signed by the mayor and the members of the Township Committee. Congratulations, Owen. Thank you. I really appreciate um, this award. It's a big honor. And um, I also want to extend the thanks to my parents, my family, and the troop, as well as the township for helping me work through my project. Um, They're a great help in assisting me as I did the project. So I want to thank everyone who contributed to this award. And it really means a lot to me. Thank you. And I believe next we have a check presentation from uh, from NOFA for our community assistance network. First of all, I'd like to thank you and everyone's time this evening. It's an absolute pleasure to be involved with the municipality of Hillsborough and Hillsborough Township. I'd like to read our letter into the record uh, to recognize this great community. Establishing a partnership with Hillsborough Township was enabling in order to create a new winter's farmer's market, which was held at your wonderful Hillsborough Municipal Building. Through a partnership with the Northeast Organic Farming Association of New Jersey, NOFA New Jersey, and the participating market manager, Tony Kennett. Farms and vendors, we are happy to inform you that the Winters Farmers Market was indeed well received by the public and a huge success. The market was held once a month for a total of five Saturdays through the months of December, January, February, March, and April. Through the success of the Hillsborough Winters Farmers Market, it became evident that Hillsborough Township believes in the importance of supporting our local food sources and businesses year-round. NOFA New Jersey, which stands for the Northeast Organic Farming Association of New Jersey, and we are based here in Hillsborough on R River Road. We are part of this active community. We are working hand-in-hand -hand with our local farmers' desire to make local, sustainable, grown food available to all in our community. We seek to develop a market consisting of local farms and artisans that not only provide quality goods to our general population, but also enables families enrolled in the food bank program to be better served and nutritionally educated. The market aims to provide community outreach through cons consumer education of the local food system and nutrition, as well as through fiscal and product support of the food bank. Now at this time, we are more than happy that through the efforts of the Winters Farmers Market, we are making a donation to the, to the uh, Hillsborough Food Bank. Thank you again for providing such a fine facility as a host community for the markets. All right, as the market manager, I would also like to concur that it, it was a very successful market. Uh, we had a wonderful, wonderful uh, engagement from the community and I, oh, we're shuffling in, we're shuffling in. Um, and I would love to open up the discussion about potentially doing it again this season, perhaps once a month. So um, well, I'll give it back to you, back to you now. <laughs> Consider it open, so I am sure Pam or or Anthony, we're gonna we're gonna try to do this guy. I guess Bob is really. Yeah, we'll be we'll be working right. with them for sure. Yeah, no, no, it's great. And I just want to just note that it's Bob Wagner on the end here. 
our director of social services, along with Parks and Rec. So. Yes, yeah, yeah. Okay, well, yeah, I mean that part, like, so now Yeah, Bob and... Okay, as promised, first I just want to thank everyone for joining us this evening. Congratulations to our proclamation recipients, and of course, thank you to NOFA for the generous donation. And as promised, we will take a pause. You're more than for you to leave, but again, you're more than welcome to stay. We don't have refreshments this evening, but uh, we will not be offended if you decide to uh, enjoy the rest of the evening uh, at home or pursue any other activities. So we'll take a pause now. Great. Okay, everyone, we're uh, back in session. Uh, we do not have any new business uh, at this time, so uh, next is public comment on matters that are not on the agenda. So if you have any comments for anything that's not on this evening's agenda, please come to the microphone, state your name and address for the record. Did my pen go? Hello, my Hi. name is Deborah Chores McMillan. And my address is 13 Whitehall Court. I'm sorry, ma'am, I didn't hear you. My name is Deborah George McNella. My address is 13 Whitehall Court. My question to you is regarding the response of the Robert Wood EMS service here at Hillsborough. It has been come to my attention, actually I have the contract in front of me, that Robert Wood agrees to commit two ambulances to Hillsborough Township community 24-7. That, in fact, does not happen. If you want to go back in your OEM records, you can look it up. We've had, and nobody's been able to say where these ambulances are stationed. Do you have a comment to that? I don't know. Services. I'm not sure what that means. They're not in town 24-7 as the contract states. That's do you want I, a copy of the contract? I understand. No, no, no. I know what's in the contract. Uh, where, where is your, uh, your my your question? To you, my background? No, no. Uh, no. Where is the? Where are you getting the claim that there's that they're not here? How about from uh, radios from EMS? I have a background in EMS. I've been a flight nurse for over 15 years. I know EMS. I've been an ICU nurse for over 30. So my question is, where are they stationed? I asked this last time when the question, when this was raised, and the township here, all of you, said they were going to be here. That is not correct. And you didn't have an answer to where they were going to be stationed when I asked that. So my question to you, and you can look in OEM records, because you had mutual aid from Montgomery and Manville recently because Robert Wood was not in town. So I'm asking you, per the contract, why is that not occurring? So I, I don't believe what you're saying is accurate. Uh, they are. I'm just saying you're wrong. They're not, uh, where you, they you stationed? You can say whatever you like. But, where are but they stationed then? Tell they, me. They, they have a location in town. There's, where? Rent there's space. Two, 
Is Where it? can you tell me the location so, of the ambulances in town? Okay, so I would well, to hold on, hold okay, on a sec. Sorry. I'm sorry. Two things. Sure. First of all, they have rented space uh, back in uh, behind uh, in the Larkin behind by near the movie theater back in in that area. They also utilize some of our uh, fire company, but they are not stationed there all the time. They are in motion most of the time. But they are in town. No, they're not. I'm just going to be honest with you, sir. I, they're not, and the records would prove it to you. If you would like to submit to the operations of emergency management and the records for dispatch, I'd be happy to accommodate that for you. I, 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 with all due respect, I don't need you to get that for it. We'll, we'll, we'll take care of it through our Thank emergency you. management ourselves. And you'll see that I'm saying the I, truth. But, but that, that's not. But the, the nonetheless... The issue of mutual aid has nothing to do with whether there's two vehicles here or not. If there are multiple calls at any time, yes, we call in others to as, I understand as a backup that. purpose. Of course, I understand that. But contract 3.1, ambulance response time, it says it right here in your contract. So that's my question to you. I'm not going to argue with me, argue with no, you, no. excuse me, but I'm just saying that's in the contract. So that was my question. And it wasn't answered the no, first no, time you this didn't, came you didn't ask a question. You, you made a statement. The, the I also asked a question. The, the question, the contract says two vehicles, and that's what, they're, that's what they're abiding by. Okay, then why don't we go to another statement on the contract about the response time for the mutual aid. Which says 10 minutes, 59 seconds on no less than 90 percent of the occasions in any given 160 hour period correct and they've been every month for the past three that they have now uh, we've been tracking information for them they have been north of 90 percent no they haven't but thank you kindly <laughs> i'm just telling you, you, you no you they haven't there and, and, and say what you want I, I actually have the records i have the data prove it to us thank you so, Committee Mendelcore, if you don't mind, uh, that is not true. Just just because you say something doesn't make it true, and without data, it's just someone's opinion. So the data does show that they are beating the the um, contract as far as the percentages of response time, as well as having two ambulances in town. Mm -hmm. And it's not odd for even the Hillsborough Rescue Squad prior to ask for mutual aid. <laughs> All towns do that. So when there's two or three uh, accidents in town, that does happen. So they make sure that they meet those numbers. So. Uh, that is not true. Most of the time, there's an ambulance right here at the <coughs> municipal building um, because I see it all the time here. So they are throughout town, and they have been following it. The data does show that, and our OEM director has been they, daily they, calls we, with their... We get uh, their data every month on the uh, response times and the compliance. And it's not 100%, I, I will, but the, the metric can never be 100%. It's 90, and they are have been 94, 95, 96 throughout the four months that they have now been taking over. And you could shake your head and say that you don't believe that, but that's the data. And I, I believe the OEM director had reached out uh, as well to the individual, explain that. Okay. okay. Any other additional uh, <coughs> comments? Please state your name, address for the record. Meryl Gisberg <coughs> for Hickory Hill Road. Um, since this came up, um, I was somebody who opened that information. I put in a public records request, and um, I did receive data that the compliance was, as you said, north of 93%, 94%. But the question is, compliant of what? I think that's what she's asking. The contract stated that the way that the response time was supposed to be uh, reported was the total number of BLS responses the response time to BLS calls, identifying time of dispatch and time of arrival, the number of response times over 10 minutes and 59 seconds, the number of incidents a BLS unit was not available, the number of incidents when a mutual aid ambulance was called into the township, the total number of calls where the patient was not transported, and the total number of patient emergency transports. Uh, we're not getting that data. So I think, it I think she has well, a point. When you, when you, no, no, she has no point. Because she didn't provide any evidence here, so let's not with the grandstanding. And I see your candidates in the back of the room videotaping again. So, I mean, we know what's going on here, but trying to create a false narrative 
where there is there, there, there's no I'm asking no, no, no. for the narrative no 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 no, no 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 you're creating a false narrative by making false statements this is from the contract no 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 ma'am ma you're ma making you are making conclusions that are false now when you made your open request you asked for specific information you received it if you didn't get what you expected Resubmit an OPA request for the information you are seeking. That is what an OPA request requires you to do. So if you it didn't. It appears that I didn't get the information I requested because you don't have it and couldn't supply it. That, so that, I, I guess that, what I'm saying. That's not well, true. Another that's piece, not true. Well, another aspect of this is that we were supposed to get reporting on the OEM page after three months. I believe this service started on June 3rd. We're well north of three months, and there's nothing on there. Sure. So I, these but, are the stats that we need. Okay. <clears throat> that, and I, know I, you, I really you don't want to engage in a discussion. I just want to make that comment. This is the information we need. And it's available. So yep. obviously you you, you, you opened it, is, got is it, and you're not satisfied because it doesn't feed into your narrative. And, and Mayor, one thing I may add is that it, it's nice that we're getting these stats now. We've never had them before. Yeah. So as we see ambulance drive around town, if you can imagine when there's more than one shift, those folks, their pages would have to go off. They'd get in their car, they would drive to the station, they would get in the ambulance and go to the call. So to have someone say that an ambulance in town and driving from one town over is much quicker than the response time that I just mentioned. But the data that they're seeking was never provided to the township all these years. So we're finally getting data, which is what we wanted. And that data is above what the contract states. And we've been getting many calls saying that the response time has been quicker. Uh, for especially from folks that have used the ambulance mm -hmm. time and time again uh, with the elderly and our seniors. So, again, we have the data you asked for, the data you received it, but just saying things doesn't make them true. So, I'm more than happy to deal with any of the cases one on one. Uh, Mr. Sharon, our OEM director, has taken every single call, and there has been very few, but he has received those calls. He's called the people back, gone out to their homes. He's talked to Robert Wood Johnson, he's talked to the county dispatch and each time those claims have not been true. So I'm just stating a fact. Okay. Anyone else would like to come up for make comments on matters not on the agenda? Okay, seeing none, we are moving on to public hearings. <clears throat> First up, uh, Ordinance 2017-07. Ordinance of the Township of Hillsborough in the County of Somerset, New Jersey, amending Chapter 188, 188 Land Use and Development, Article 5, Districts and Standards of the Code of the Township of Hillsborough, by adding Section 188-113.7, Mixed Use Inclusionary District 1. This ordinance was recommended by the Planning Board, and as a result of the proposed zoning amendment, it would further assist the Township in meeting um, the, our affordable housing obligations or better known as uh, Trenton requirements. So may I have a motion to open up public hearing on Ordinance 2017-07? So move, Mayor. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any discussion from the dais? From the floor? Okay, may I have a motion to close public hearing and adopt Ordinance 2017-07? Uh, hold on. Oh. Hi, Jane, Jane Stats, 101 Devonshire Court. Uh, I just want to clarify some things about the affordable housing aspect of this. Um, it is only 24% of the uh, units that are for affordable housing. So um, I'm, I'm concerned about uh, the density of it with 175 total units um, that affects the congestion in the area. Mm -hmm. And uh, on the other hand, we do need affordable housing. I mean, there are even residents in Hillsboro that, um, like our senior citizens that have lived here a long time, um, young adults that have lived here all their lives, and in order to continue living here, you know, as their uh, economic, economic circumstances change, um, this affordable housing can provide them the opportunity to stay. And I'm just, I, I would also like um, the township to have maybe a more, um, uh, a more uh, like a definite plan regarding affordable housing in particular. Okay, thank you. Thank so, you. Uh, well, uh, I can't let you get away with that, I'm sorry. Okay. Um, there is a plan that is documented and approved with the courts that is already in place. As the next round has 
been rolled out, which is not yet finalized yet, we are now in the process of having to revise our plans in order to ensure that we are compliant with what whatever mandate we are now given by the state. And that's exactly what this is, a mandate. We are not actively looking to increase our density in town uh, so that we can add additional housing, because I think the vast majority of, of residents here understand the impact that has on uh, municipal services, on our school district, uh, on our traffic, uh, on other economic uh, factors in town. But the reality is that we have been mandated uh, by the state to say that we will have some obligation uh, not yet defined to provide affordable housing. And 24% is actually well above the standard for, for, for developments. Um, we're fortunate to get 20. In this particular case, uh, there's a 24% set aside, which is um, about as good as you're going to get out of a developer. I wish we didn't have to go down the path at all. But the reality is that um, if unless we're compliant with what the state mandate will be, uh, at the end of the day, the courts will say, Hillsborough, you're not compliant. The developers will come in and implement whatever plan they choose to implement, and we'll have no control over that. So we do have a plan. We're in the middle of our courts. Uh, Mr. Bernstein is our, our attorney for, on affordable housing. Uh, we have an affordable housing uh, consultant that works with us and works with the court master. And as soon as our final number is determined uh, through, the, uh, uh, through the Fair Share Housing Office, um, then we'll come out with uh, how we will meet those obligations. We have a number of, of tentative uh, plans that are possible, but we certainly don't want to enter into uh, long-term uh, contracts with unless we know what our final numbers are. So that's why you don't see a you know, development by development plan yet because we don't want to ever have to provide more than is going to be mandated by our, uh, our wonderful legislators down in Trenton. But um, relying on new development is not the only way to satisfy affordable housing. There are other ways to do that. You can work with nonprofits. You can uh, take advantage of, um, of existing uh, vacancies. Really. Well, I don't that, think that, that has been done in other towns. Not in order no idea to meet the obligation. <laughs> Wait, 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 wait. Not in order to meet the, the level of the obligation that we will have. If you had a couple dozen units, yeah, maybe you could do that. But, you know, we're talking in the hundreds, not in the, not in the tens. Well, well, like I said, this is only 42 units. And, and for, uh, out of 175, again, it's, it's not those 42 units that are causing the problem. It's 175. And, You're 100 percent right. And, I, and I'm just concerned that other... All the other options. I just want to encourage you to explore the other and options we, as and, well. And, and for the purposes we of the record, we are action. exploring. The, we have worked with nonprofit organizations. We have all affordable housing situations. We are continuing to discuss those. We are not leaving any stone unturned, and we are not necessarily moving in a direction solely and strictly on development applications, because frankly, we think there's a better way to deal with it. And we have been since 2000, since 1998. So uh, this is just a piece of a much larger puzzle that we're trying to address, and we're addressing it here with this individual. And as the committeeman indicated, when I'm going across the state representing municipalities, we're hearing people say, we can't do more than 10, we can't do more than 15. The court says 20, and we're at 24. And that's what we're pushing for, and that's what we're trying to do. Keep the density as low as possible and get the maximum amount of affordable housing we can get where we can get it when we have to. Okay, thank you. I just, I just wanted to echo Mr. Bernstein for a minute too because we have met with, with multiple volunteer organizations and one of the issues is that thank you. they can only accommodate a small amount, anywhere between one to five homes. So we've had met with, with a lot and Mr. Maskey as well and I have met with not-for-profits coming in and when we talked to them, I'm like, oh, this is great, but they tell us they can only accommodate one, maybe two, maybe three homes. So in the large picture, as, as Committee Delcord mentioned, that's great and we want to work with them, absolutely, but to satisfy our need, that, that there's just not enough small not-for-profits out there because you can imagine how much money like Habitat for Humanity, we've met with them recently too, and it's just a very small amount that we could do because we'd obviously want to work with those not-for-profits first. What about also using um, existing um, empty, uh, like, 
we're rezoning like some of the empty storefronts that we have. Is that, is that an think, option? I think Mr. Bernstein has said we're, 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 we're looking we're, at all we're, options. We're examining every okay. option. Yep. Uh, we would like to do more all affordable part of the problem and obviously we've asked this governing body and everybody else is involved a lot of it turns on federal tax credits that may or may not survive the next congressional budget cycle so we're doing whatever we can but it's difficult to find nonprofits who are interested in doing it without some kind of tax incentive it's difficult to talk about redevelopment of empty storefronts and putting situations in if nobody wants to build them there. But we're talking to everybody and we're pushing everybody in that direction. Thank you. Good evening, board. My name is Glenn Watson. I reside at 22 Arthur Road in Hillsborough. And this is in regards to uh, the development of the farm that's uh, behind our street, Tower Road, Arthur in particular. A couple Mr. questions. Mr. Mr. Mayor, this is, not the, this is not a property that's before the governing body this evening. It's another property. I understand the individual property at issue. This is not the property in question. This is the one across from the mobile re uh, automotive repair facility on 206? I believe it is, but it's not the Chase Partners property that I think you're up here to discuss. Okay. My apologies. Sir. Thank no you. Worries. No not a problem. No Any additional comments on this ordinance? Okay. <clears throat> so I have a motion to close the public hearing and adopt uh, Ordinance 2017-07. So, so moved. moved. A second. Okay. <clears throat> Roll call, please. Commander Zalcor. Yes. Commander Thompson. Yes, but Mayor, I just want to say one thing because uh, I wasn't going to comment because uh, I did it at the last two meetings, but I just have to go back and point out once again that we are stuck here in a situation because of inaction by Trenton. Uh, it, it, this goes back to when Speaker, Democrat Speaker Joe Roberts first did the legislation, A500, eliminating RCAs where towns had the ability to work with municipalities in their zones like Phillipsburg or other areas that had the actual capacity to take on this sort of uh, huge residential developments uh, where we could work with them and say, you know, we're going to buy affordable housing in your area to develop because they have the infrastructure. We don't have the busing capacity. We don't have the same... Uh, infrastructure that towns like Phillipsburg or Plainfield, <coughs> Newark, Camden, Trenton, areas that uh, traditionally were getting affordable housing, towns can't even work with them anymore. Even though that there's where there's actual need to rehab. Rehabbing housing is perfect, uh, as uh, was mentioned. We'd love to rehab housing. We don't have it here. But there's lead paint housing plaguing cities like Trenton, Camden, Newark, that we could fix up and actually put people in that want safe homes. But because RCAs were eliminated under A500 years ago, all that was gone. For what benefit? I still don't know. Um, it's amazing to me uh, that we're in this situation. You have Princeton. Princeton, which is probably the most liberal uh, town in, near us, they are actually being sued by fair share housing right now. I mean, there's a big article in the paper yesterday about it. They're being sued because they won't build enough affordable housing. And that town has gone above and beyond to build affordable housing. And they're still saying, you're not, not doing enough. The inaction in Trenton is bankrupting towns for, with this uh, obligation and this lack of infrastructure that there's no accountability for. And it's a shame. I don't know where it's going to end. Uh, but uh, when, when you see these towns that are doing their best, like Hillsborough, to try to do it, and we're still saying that's not enough, it's got to end at some point. And empty storefronts, it's a good point. How do you fix them? There's been bills sponsored by Democrat uh, Senator Lesniak trying to fix that situation. He can't get the bills through to address these, these large-scale developments and malls that have gone empty or, or properties that have sat empty to say, why don't we use tax credits to facilitate those getting built? When he brings that up, those get squ uh, quashed in committee. I mean, it, it, at some point, somebody down in Trenton has to do something to fix this. And uh, I'm sad we're at that precipice where I don't know if it's going to happen. So, But grudgingly, I vote yes, because if we don't, we get sued, and we got to build triple the amount uh, that's required, which is egregious to this municipality. So I apologize, but uh, that's how I feel. Thank you. We're up to you, Deputy Mayor. Yeah, I just wanted to say I totally agree with Kunu and Thompson. We have very passionate people up here. I'm a realtor. He's in the real estate industry as well and we take it very seriously here and being fair 
and uh, affordable housing is a, a very sensitive subject throughout the state and beyond. And as uh, Ms. Stats has stated, you know, it's 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 a density issue, and uh, you know how high is high. So we certainly will, and have been, um, for several years, been scrutinizing this and really staying on top of what we are responsible for so we don't get hit with uh, a bigger number than we are expecting even now. So reluctantly, of course, anything affordable housing is always, you know, uh, a, a big subject here, but um, to move things forward and to do things proper, I'd have to say I would, yes, so. Yeah. <clears throat> I'm just going to add, as, uh, <clears throat> when I first joined this township committee, I wound up, I think, on the planning board. I don't know, if Frank, by the time you joined, was still cleaning up the mess from the round two, where this muni this municipality, prior to me joining it, did not have a plan. It missed the deadline. And this township lost control of planning. And that's what we are trying to avoid, is to keep control of what little planning that, you know, that this process allows us to have. The last thing we want is to allow the courts to be our planners. I'm sure our township planner there would appreciate that uh, that factor or what that could lead to because it, it was not pretty. Um, and uh, just to give numbers, I'm going to like Councillor to correct me, Bridgewater has already settled their number? Is it yes. Was that, was that board to around 1,400 affordable housing units? Yes. So multiply that when they say 10 to 20 percent set, set, set aside, that could be Multiply that by four or five to give you an, an idea. Not four or five. Yeah. Yeah, at least four or least five. five. <clears throat> to give you an idea of the total number of housing units Bridgewater is facing. So uh, that is what we're working diligently up here too. So, and it's it's ongoing struggle. So, with that being said, I want to maintain a control of our planning. So uh, I'm voting yes. Okay. Next up. Uh, Ordinance 2017-15, Ordinance Authorizing Acceptance of Easements from New Amwell Associates, LLC. Uh, the acceptance of property can only be um, effectuated through an ordinance. This township attorney, or the township attorney, has received this and found it to be acceptable. May I have a motion to open public hearing on Ordinance 2017-15? So move, Mayor. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any discussions from the dais? From the floor. Seeing them, I have a motion to close public hearing and adopt Ordinance 2017-15. So moved. Second. Okay, roll call, please. Commander Dalcourt. Yes. Commander Thompson. Yes. Mayor McCauley. Yes. Mayor Sarach. Yes. And we're moving on to considerations. Uh, consideration number one: resolution authorizing the hiring of seasonal employees, Zachary Reinson for the Department of Public Works with a start date on or about September 13th, 2017, at a salary rate of $10 an hour, not to exceed 29 hours per week, funded through the Clean Communities Grant. May I have a motion? So moved. Second. Comments from the dais? No comments, Anthony, on the grant? One of his favorite grant. Okay, comments from the floor? Seeing none, roll call, please. Commander Dalcor? Yes. Commander Thompson? Yes. Mayor McCauley? Yes. Mayor Sirachi? Yes. Consideration number two, resolution authorizing the hiring of Kirsten Otkin to the position of part-time floater to the township administrator clerk's office, an hourly rate of $14.50 per hour, not to exceed 29 hours per week, effective September 13th, 2017. I have a motion. So move, Mayor. Second. Okay, uh, any comments from the dais? Yes, Mayor. Um, okay. Ms. Borak and I had an opportunity to go through quite a few candidates. Kirsten was uh, on the top, She'll be spending a majority of the time in uh, the administration office and uh, with her background um, in administration and customer service, I think she's going to be a great addition to the team. Okay. Thank you. Any additional comments from the dais? Mm -hmm. From the floor? Seeing none, roll call, please. Turn for. Yes. Moon Tom, uh, Thompson? Yes. Debbie Moon Rapoli? Yes. Mayor Sarachi? Yes. Consideration number three. Resolution authorizing execution of the contract uh, with Yanuzi Demo and Recycling Corporation 
for the disposal of old asphalt from the Orton Road site in an amount not to exceed $25,000. Uh, the, uh, the stockpile of old af asphalt needs to be removed from the Orton Road site. Three quotes were received, and DPW recommends awarding contract to Yanuzi for the additional $2 per ton because they are located on Ricefield Road, which is just two miles away from the Hillsborough site. And by using Yanuzi, uh, Yanuzi, there will be less traffic congestion, fuel usage, and reduce the time to remove all that material, which will allow our crews to be reassigned to other work or, or to other work requests sooner. So we have a motion. So moved. Second. Comments from the dais. From the floor. Seeing on roll call, please. Who gave the second? Oh. Frank. Thank you. <laughs> Commander Mandelcourt. Yes. Commander Thompson. Yes. Deputy Mayor Pauley. Yes. Mayor Sorachi. Yes. Consideration number four resolution authorizing the purchase of a 20 foot deck. Uh, over trailer in an amount not to exceed $21,951.64 from the Garden State Bobcat through the Middlesex Regional Educational Services Commission Cooperative Pricing System. Um, Co-op number 65, bid number 15, uh, dash, or 15 uh, uh, slash 16-08. Uh, the purchase, uh, this purchase is being funded through the Tree Mitigation Fund. May I have a motion? So moved. Second. Comments from the dais? From the floor. Seeing on roll call, please. Commissioner Yes. Commissioner Thompson? Yes. Commissioner May McCauley? Yes. Mayor Sriracha? Yes. Consideration number five. Resolution authorizing the removal and replacement of carpeting in a municipal complex in an amount not to exceed $6,063.33. Uh, this is being funded out of our building maintenance uh, fund. May I have a motion? Yes. Uh, so moved. Second. <laughs> Comments from the dais? Floor? Roll call, please. Mayor Dalcourt? Yes. Mayor Thompson? Yes. Deputy Mayor McCauley? Yes. Mayor Sirachi? Yes. Consideration number six, resolution authorizing the purchase of a copy machine for the engineering department from Brewer Associates in amount not to exceed $15,950 with an annual service agreement after the six-month warranty expires of $480 per year plus two cents per square foot. And I believe this is coming out of the engineering budget. So may I have a motion, please? So move, Mayor. Second. Comments from the dais? From the floor? Roll call, please. Commissioner Yes. Commissioner Yes. Commissioner McCauley? Yes. Mayor Sirachi? Yes. Consideration number seven, resolution authorizing the purchase of replacement picnic tables and benches for the township's parks in amount not to exceed $6,870 from the Play Power LT Farmington, Inc. through New Jersey State Contract number 16, Fleet 00122 uh, <coughs> slash uh, T0103. Mm -hmm. And this is being f uh, funded through our uh, capital ordinance. May I have a motion? So move, Mayor. Huh? Second. Oh, you'll get it. Okay. Comments from the dais first. <laughs> from the floor. Mm -hmm. Come on up, sir. Susan Gullah, Ford Hunt Club Road. Um, on the replacement of the picnic tables, benches, is that because of vandalization? They broke? There's new requirements? on benches, what happened on that? You know, especially some at AVM Park, just, they're just old. They're, they're falling apart, splinters. They're even in the, um, the actual sensory garden. You can only paint them and sand them so many times. So um, just for safety issues. So we're going okay. through a lot of the benches that just really don't have to be painted anymore. So they're, they're just- together with the paint. Yeah, I, I've you actually, you can, you can blame me for some of that because as I make my rounds and <laughs> I call John and take pictures of my iPhone and say they're falling apart, so. Okay, thank you. Sure. Thank you. <laughs> Any additional comments from the floor? Seeing none, roll call, please. Ms. Elford? Yes. Ms. Thompson? Yes. Mr. Mopali? Yes. <clears throat> Mayor Sirachi? Yes, consideration number eight, resolution authorizing the execution of agreement with the Morris County Cooperative Pricing Council to renew the township's membership through September 30th, 2021. May I have a motion? So move, Mayor. Second. Comments from the dais? From the floor? Seeing on roll call, please. Mayor Dalford? Yes. Mayor Thompson? Yes. Mayor Rapoli? Yes. Mayor Sparachi? 
Yes, consideration number nine, resolution authorizing abatement of property maintenance violations and placement of liens against such properties in accordance with Township Ordinance, Chapter 232, Property Maintenance, Article 2, Vacant and Abandoned Residential Properties. May I have a motion? So moved. Second. Comments from the dais? Susan, you don't have to get up. Nine Woods Road is on there. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, I thought I had you. I thought, I thought I answered it for you in advance. So, just a quick. So, I just wanted to remind the committee that the uh, the NJ the NJMMA New Jersey Municipal Manager Association recognized Hillsborough Township um, late last year as the model ordinance, and this has been working quite well uh, throughout the township, uh, putting this in this process in place. So, it's been respected not only by the managers across the state, but also real estate. And the banking industry as well. So this has really helped us clean up a lot of properties and keep a lot of residents happy. And uh, our health director, Dr. Glenn Bellney, has leading the project as well. And uh, we've, we've, it's been remarkable uh, in the past couple of years that this, this has been in place. Thank you. Any additional comments from the dais? From the floor. S Susan. Susan. <laughs> Susan Gulliford. You, you were on the right track. I was right, wondering. Right, I was what? Just so you're not hurt. I was wondering about Woods Road. No, I just, um, I just wondered if you could just discuss this. Um, I, I, the legalese is it that they're stopping like the daily charges that have been coming up, and they're changing it over to a lien? I didn't really understand okay. what this said. Know, the legalese. Um, just fall, following through on the ordinance, what's mm -hmm. happened is that we've identified certain properties that are in fact vacant and abandoned, therefore they fall under the ordinance. After that's done, um, if there's property maintenance violations, because we want some minimal property you know, requirements on there, property maintenance requirements, um, Dr. Bellinay will serve them with a notice of violation that they should have paid the violation. And then if they don't do so, what ends up happening is we've hired a contractor to go out there and cut the grass, you know, trim stuff or whatever, to bring it into some minimum standards. And that's what the then what we're doing is now putting a lien on the property for the cost incurred by the municipality in doing that. Oh, okay. I thought the liens were already built into it. I didn't realize that was a change. Yeah, okay. no. That, so, so that's what each, the change. Each property involves. incurred a five hundred dollar expense to get a crew out there. We hired an mm -hmm. independent contractor. They went out there. The township expended those funds, and now we're going to place a lien on the property uh, in that amount to get reimbursed for those costs. Okay. And, thank you. And Susan, what our data has shown is that after that first time that we put a lien on the property, the bank contacts us. In the past, they never did. Now they contact us. They don't want that lien, and now they end up starting to take care of the property. So our first year in budgeting that those dollar amounts take care of those houses, now we see a lot less that we need to expend because the banks don't like that. Mm -hmm. So they know the town is now serious because prior to this ordinance, we didn't have any teeth. We just called and said, okay. you know, it, it was kind of like, you know, a security guard. We can yell stop and yell stop again. But now we have teeth in it. Now there's consequences and the banks don't like those consequences. So it helps the township so we don't have to clean up as many properties as well. I, mean, I can guess your, your yeah, question. Yeah, uh, you mentioned it What if it's owned it by someone time. who's not a bank? Is that there's no, yeah, on yes, some yeah. properties there's it's no bank involved. Bank. I know that has worked <coughs> because we have the one behind us that's been rehabbed, it's now up for sale, somebody flipped right, so, it. So there, there are ways around that as well. So we do send our zoning officer right. out, we do send our, our health department because if there's other violations and we, we do try to work with them and as Committeeman Thompson, Deputy Mayor McCauley as well. We try to, they volunteer their time as well in going out and trying to help some of these property owners because some of them are seniors and can't do it themselves. So we do try to help volunteer and go out there as well. So there are other avenues that we do try to help. Oh, okay, thanks. But sometimes they just don't like cleaning up. Okay. Any additional comments from the floor? Roll call, please. Yes. Thompson. Yes. 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 Consideration number 10, resolution or urging the state legislature to extend the 2% two two cap on police and fire arbitration contract awards. May I have a motion? So moved. Second. Comments from the dais? I'll let you have it, Mayor. All right. So uh, the... Uh, the um, this uh, cap on contract awards, arbitration contract awards, is set to sunset at the end of the year unless the state legislature takes action. And it's been one of our uh, key, I'm going to say, tools in our toolbox 
for uh, maintaining control and meeting the 2% uh, cap on property taxes. So uh, and I believe a lot of municipalities, the New Jersey League of Municipalities, has been urging municipalities to pass such a resolution, and uh, we're just trying to give the legislature a few months to act So, by putting them on notice. So, and I believe it is going to the legislative leaders? Yes. So, so it's going to those that can actually put such legislation onto their, uh, on, you know, onto their voting docket to take action. So. Any other comments from the floor? Seeing on roll call, please. Mayor Mandel, four. Yes. Mayor Thompson. Yes. Mayor McCauley. Yes. Mayor Yes. Consideration number 11, resolution authorizing execution of agreement with Walgreens for administration of influenza vaccination clinics. May I have a motion? So moved. Second, Mayor. Okay. Any comments from the dais? From the floor? Roll call, please. Mayor Mandel, four. Yes. Thompson. Yes. Senator Mayor Yes. Mayor Sirachi. Yes. Okay, moving on to the very lengthy consent agenda. Um, I have a motion to approve this evening's consent agenda. So moved, Mayor. Second. Is there any comments from the dais? I do, Mayor. Ma um, Mayor, I'll, I'll go ahead. I, I was just going to see if we could defer number 16. I don't think that's... Necessary yeah. to be active. I was going to see if we could. Yeah. I was going to see if we could um, yeah. remove that from the agenda. <laughs> and, and I second that. I, ob I object to removing her. <laughs> so, uh, I'm yeah, I was going to highlight number 16, uh, Miss Decker, from the position of assistant to the mayor and township administrator. So, uh, Mary has worked in our department for f five years, a little over five years, when I brought her in back in August, five years ago. So she's done an exemplary job and has gone way above and beyond uh, what all of us could ask up here. And uh, it's always hard to uh, let an employee go, but in the township here, we always want people through career development to uh, advance their careers, and that's what we stand for here in Hillsborough Township and with our training. So she's ready to move on to the courts. And uh, again, our court systems have been top in the vicinage, and I know that she'll do a great job. So. Congratulations, Mary. Yeah. Yep, going to be missed by comments? hearing your voice when you pick up the phone when we call. I know. In, so. Won't be the same. I'd just like to say, Mayor, on a personal note, I participated in the, her, the interviews when Mary was hired, and um, she's going to be greatly missed in her office. She is always a smiling face if, and is a calming effect for many of the residents so um and also sure for the governing body too she yeah. calms us down <laughs> too so uh you said it i didn't um so it's very sad but as anthony mentioned we have um sprung board a lot of great people out of our office yeah. and um mm -hmm. i'm sad to see you go <laughs> but i'm very happy for you and slightly jealous. And I want to. I want to. I also want to thank her son for being here tonight. Thank you. Go, Brian. <laughs> okay. Well, I'll say Mary, something too. I was going to let it go. Yeah, I was. I was going to stop. But uh, Mary also has the inevitable task of trying to herd cats and get us to agree what meetings we're going to go to. And it's what. more like herding fish. <laughs> Uh, as you can imagine, with five very diverse schedules, uh, trying to get us to different places, as we know up here, but uh, we always end up showing up places, but Mary's the one who always stays on top of us and gets us going places, and uh, I have to thank her for that. And also, uh, when I was mayor and deputy mayor up here, whenever I had to bring my twins in here, uh, they would certainly be standing on her desk or sitting in her chair and hanging out, and uh, Mary's just always been great to my family, too. So on a personal level, thank you so much. Uh, I know you're not going too far down the hallway, but we're not going to see you as much, so you will be greatly, greatly missed. So thank you for everything. It's appreciated. Yeah. Mary, thanks for everything. And uh, I know you will do great over in courts. Um, it'll be weird not having you pick up when we call, but, um, but uh, thanks for everything you've done. And Mary, just a final, I just wanted to mimic what Pam said. Every time, every day we ever called, we needed anything, you were always just really happy to help everybody with a smile on your face. I know you always said you loved your job, and I truly believed you. So uh, good luck in your new endeavors, and I know we'll be seeing you. Any 
Any comments from the floor, Mary? <laughs> no, no, don't worry. Thank you very much. Brian would like to make a comment. Is it too late to take this off? Mm -hmm. It's fast. Yeah. I'm going to say roll call and let them say no since okay. I go last. Roll call, please. Raymond Delport. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I mean, Raymond Thompson. Yes, thank you, Mary. Deborah McCauley. Yes. <laughs> I don't have to vote. I'm off the hook. No. You are off the hook. <laughs> yes, and best wishes again. Okay. Claims lists. We got two of them this evening. Claims list 2017-16, 2017-17. I have a motion to approve both claims lists. So moved, Mayor. Second. Any comments from Dais? <laughs> Floor. Seeing none, roll call, please. Delcor. Yes. Raymond Thompson. Yes. Deborah Mayor McCauley. Yes. Mayor Sirachi. Yes. Uh, <clears throat> this concludes our regular meeting for this evening. Um, Oops. We okay. do have an executive session. Uh, ask Ms. Bork, please read the resolution. Mm -hmm. Whereas Section 8 of the Open Public Meetings Act, Chapter 231 of the Public Laws of 1975, permits the exclusion of the public from meeting in certain circumstances, and whereas the Township Committee is of the opinion that such circumstances exist, now therefore be resolved by the Township Committee, the Township of Hillsborough County, and Somerset State, New Jersey, as follows. Number one, the public shall be excluded from the discussion of the hearing after specified subject matter. Number two, the general nature of the subject matter to be discussed is as follows. Number uh, Letter A, litigation, affordable housing, and Hillsborough properties. B, contract negotiations, Teamsters Local 701, and Somerset County Dispatch. Number three, the Township Committee may take official action on those items discussed in the executive section upon the completion of the executive session. Number four, the minutes of those discussions shall be made available to the public as soon as those matters under discussion are longer confidential or sensitive nature. Number five, this resolution should take effect immediately. Okay. May I have a motion, please? So move, Mayor. Second. Comments from the dais? From the floor, roll call, please. Raymond Zalcor. Yes. Raymond Thompson. Yes. Mayor Rapoli. Yes. Mayor Sirachi. Yes, and we will now move to executive session. Uh, good evening, everyone.